Rabotai, welcome back to another class of Evan HaEzer, Simon Aleph, Halacha Chet, part 4 of the Shi'ur. We're going to do Bezrat Hashem Belineder 2 Bash today in Ot Yud Gimel and in Ot Yud Adal. They're pretty small, so let's try to see if we can get them done. The Bash says, Asur Lo Amod Beloisha. That is forbidden for a person to stay without a wife. Let's just see the Halacha and we'll go straight back into the Bash. Remember, whenever you do something, whenever you just begin a commentary on the halakha, just always go back to understand the halakha, even though it's self-explanatory. Uh, nevertheless, always go back to make it much more clearer for you. So the halakha says in Shulchan Aruch, Even though a person fulfilled the mitzvah of Purvu, Asur lo lamod belo isha. It is forbidden for him to be without a woman. Now the Bash is going to go ahead and answer the question of who made this enactment that a guy is not allowed to be without a woman even after he already did the mitzvah of pro or vum. So comes the Bash and he says, Isr midirabbanan he. This whole prohibition is only from the rabbis. It's a rabbinical enactment that a guy should not be without a woman. Alpha gav the Yalfin, and even though we learn it out, Mikra from the verse in the Torah in Pasha Bereshit, in Perak Bed, Patsk Yudchet, where it says there clearly, Lotov Hiyot Levado, that it's not good for men to be alone. So we see clearly it's a verse from the Torah. So, how is the Bash telling the reason? It's a rabbinic enactment. Comes the Bash, he says it's fine. You should understand that that verse of Lotov Hiyot Levado, Asmachte, it's only its support. For the rabbi's words. And a lot of times you'll see this Rabotai. When you see the word Asmachtehi. A lot of times when the Chachamim make an enactment. When they bring a halacha into the world. Now they have to support their words with something. So a lot of times they're going to use the verses from the Torah. As a support for their words. And that's what the Basha song is over here. Eastern Midi he This whole prohibition of not. Uh, that this whole prohibition of a guy being without a woman is only from the rabbis. It's a rabbinical enactment. Even though we learn out from the verse in the Torah where it says, Loto Yod Levado, you're right. Nevertheless, they're going to use that verse as an asmachti, as a support for their words. I'm the Rambam, Perik Tetvav, Hilchot Ishu. Look into the Rambam in chapter 5 in the Halachot of Marriages. The Ramban, however, the Ramban, be Melchomed Hashem in the Savior Melchomed Hashem, Misupak bizeh. He has a doubt in this halakha. When the Shulchan Aruch says over here, Asur lo lamod bilo isha, that it is forbidden for a guy to be without a woman, the Bash initially wants to explain it from the Gemur Masech Divamot and Tavsamach Aleph Amud Bet. He wants to tell us that this whole forbidden to be without a woman is only an enactment from the rabbis. Comes the Ramban, the Ramban says, I doubt that. Maybe it could actually be a biblical prohibition. You want to learn that it's a rabbinical prohibition, but you clearly have a pasuk in the Torah that says Lotov Yod Levado, that it's not good for a person to be alone without a woman. So maybe this whole concept where we're going to tell you that it's a sur for a guy to be without a wife, maybe it's a biblical halakha, I mean biblical law from the Torah. If that's the case, you have a very big problem. You're going to ask me, Rabbi, Lemaynaf Kamino, yeah, right? What practical difference if it's from the rabbis or if it's from the Torah? In any way you look at it, a guy is not allowed to be without a wife. Here's going to be the difference, Rabotai. If it's only rabbinical, that means you are trans... Every second or every moment that you're not trying to get married, then you are transgressing a rabbinical enactment. But if you're going to look at it like the way the Ramban wants to look at it, maybe... It's a biblical enactment. Now you're transgressing words again. Now you're transgressing the Torah words. That's a very big problem. It's you, you, have, you have to understand. Are you are you doing the are you Chasr Shalom transgressing the Chachamim, Chachamim words or are you transgressing the Torah's words? That's what, it, it does play a very big role. In any event, Rabotai, the Ramban doesn't say the the Bash doesn't say. Which way the Ramban uh, tells to, he just says Musupak. He has a doubt. Maybe it could actually be biblical. And then if it's biblical, you have a, a, a bigger problem. That's all. Continues 
in Simchat and Yudalit, Isha Bat Banim. Right, the Shulchan Aruch said, so again, let's go back into the Shulchan Aruch to get a better understanding. Afa pi shikiem priya uriviya, even though a person fulfilled the mitzvah purvu, asur lo lamod below Isha, it's for, prohibited for him to be without a woman. Who enacted this prohibition that a guy is not allowed to be without a woman? According to one opinion in the Bash, it's a rabbinical enactment. According to the Ramban, it might even be a biblical enactment that a guy is not allowed to be without a woman and he has a mitzvah from the Torah to go get and marry, to go get and get married. But uh, according to the way the Bash wants to say in the first opinion, from Masech Kitubot, it's a biblical, uh, it's a rabbinical enactment for the guy to get married. So there is a very big, uh, there is a very big difference on how you want to learn it, if it's the Rabbanan or if it's from the Torah. In any event, continues the Shulchan Aruch and he says, "V'tzarich shisa isha bad banim." He needs to marry a woman who's childbearing. Im yeshi pek bido that specifically he has the ability to do so. I feel he shall come about him even if he has many children, even though he fulfilled the mitzvah of Peru, as long as he's financially stable and he's able to go ahead and marry a woman that's childbearing, we're going to go ahead and tell him, marry a woman that is childbearing. Comes the Bash in Od Yudal and he says, Isha Bad Banim, Katwa Harif, the Rambam, the Harosh, the Rif, the Rambam, and the Rosh, the three pillars for the Shukhanar, he decides, and they all say, Mid the Rabbanan Hu Hachiyuf. This whole obligation to go ahead and get married to a woman that is childbearing after you have fulfilled the mitzvah of pru or wu, even though you have the capability of doing it financially, he wants to tell you it's only a rabbinical enactment to go ahead and get married to a childbearing woman. The katav haramban sham, the ramban writes over there, the en kofin otoli kula ama. Everybody's going to agree that you're not allowed to force this guy to go ahead and marry a childbearing woman. He wants to marry Chasushalom, a barren woman, Rabotai. He doesn't want to have more children. Since he did the Mitzvah of Puru, we're not going to go ahead and force him to marry a uh, childbearing woman. Again, but we saw yesterday that it's a servant to be without a wife. He always has to be with a wife. He just doesn't want to marry um, a childbearing woman. Maybe he doesn't want to have more children because he already has six boys and six girls. Whatever the situation might be, the Ramban is just telling you that if he does not want to marry a woman that's childbearing, you don't have the right to go ahead and force him. All the rabbis have been agreed you're not allowed to force him to get married to a childbearing woman. Why is that? This whole enactment that the Chachamim made was only... Like the way of the land, meaning that's only proper contact. That people should get married to women that are childbearing so they can go ahead and inhabit the world and bring more children. We're not going to be very stringent. We're not going to be particular with him on this. That's what the Ramban says. That if you have a guy, he filled the midst of poor rule. And now he tells you, yeah, he has money, whatever. He has children. But he says, you know, some rabbi. You know, he's not up for the work. I don't know. He, he doesn't want to stay up all night and start running after doctors. You know, a nine months pregnancy. Whatever the situation might be. Okay, Rambon says, everybody's going to agree. You don't have to force them to go ahead and marry a woman that's childbearing. But Rabotai, we have to understand. But however you want to look at it, he has to get married to a woman. Even if she's barren, he has to get married to her. So, Rabotai, if you want to see the behavior. Let's just do the behavior in Ot Yudbet. It's just very short. And one, it's a one-liner. He says, Asur lo lamod below isha, right? That what we saw in the Bash. It's forbidden for a guy to be without a wife. Isur mit the who? It's a forbidden from the rabbis. Vikras machta be almahi. He tells you Bash. He brings in the Bash what we just saw. And uh, the verse of the Pasuk. You see, he doesn't bring down, you see, he doesn't bring the verse of Lot of Yolubado. That's it's always sometimes good to do the Bash. Again, Behetev, he does it as a summary, but again. So he says in the verse of Lotov Yehudavado, is only a support for the words. Uh, let me just see something. Yes, and then he says, V'Ramban b'Melchemet Hashem misupak b'zeh. And the Rambam in Melchemet Hashem, he actually, uh, he had a doubt 
if it's only rabbinical, maybe according to the Ramban, you could actually also say, maybe this whole enactment is actually also biblical. In any event, we're going to conclude with this. Let's just do a small review. We started off today saying that if a person has a boy and a girl, and if he became a widow, or if he got divorced, even though he fulfilled the midst of Puru, it's forbidden for him to be without a woman. He has to get married. Who are the ones that are saying that, is, that he has to get married and he's not allowed to be without a wife? The Bash wanted to bring down the Masech Divamot to say that it's only a rabbinical enactment that a guy has to get married and he cannot be by himself. Even though the Pasuk in the Torah clearly says, The Pasuk clearly says in the Torah, it's not good for a guy to be by himself. No problem. The Bash is telling us they're going to use that as an asmachta, only as a support for their words. We did see the Ramban, he had a doubt on it. That this whole enactment, maybe really, it could actually be a biblical one because it's written in the, in the Torah. So maybe that when a person has a shalom, when he doesn't get married and he's by himself, maybe he's transgressing a biblical enactment. So that the Ramban says, I'm misupak, I have a doubt. Is it a rabbinical enactment or is it a biblical enactment? Whichever way it is, Rabotai. It's forbidden for a person to be without a wife, and he has to get married. Whether you want to tell me it's from the rabbis, whether it's from the Torah, whichever way you want to look at it, he needs to get married. The next point we saw, which type of woman he has to get married, specifically Isha Bat Banim. Right? We saw that if he has the money, even though he did the midst of Peru, he has to marry a woman that's going to bring him more children to the world. Came the Rosh, the Rif, and the Rambam, which the boss brought them down, and they said that this whole enactment of going ahead and marrying a woman that's going to be able to bring you children, that's only from the rabbis. That's a rabbinical enactment. Came the Ramban, and the Ramban said, if he doesn't want to marry a woman that's going to bring him children to the world, everybody's going to agree you don't have to force him to marry that woman. But again, he has to marry a woman because he's not allowed to be by himself because of sinful thoughts. And the reason why we're going to tell you that you don't have to force him to marry a woman that is uh, childbearing, because he explained that the whole institution was made, the whole institution was made like Derek Harris, like the proper contact, that this is only the proper way to go about when a guy is alone, Chasul Shalom, even if he fulfilled the mitzvah, but since he has the money, is the proper contact to go ahead and try to marry a woman that is childbearing to bring more children to the world because this is how the world behaves. People get married to bring children to the world. Ah, you're going to tell me he doesn't want to? The Ramban said that's why we're not particular with him. We're not going to be stringent on him. We're not going to force him to get married. But he has to get married. Rabotai, this will be the class for today. Have a great day. Baruch Adonai Amen ve'amen.